but listen, I see some familiar faces. I don't say old faces. <laughs> who, had, who are the virgins who has never been to the Scott Lady Sons? Well, okay, go ahead. Because then what happens is I just tell the same old stories, and then you go, oh my God, that's such a great story. And then everyone else, I love that story. So you can actually tell me a new story. But what I like to do, newbies, is I'm not going to read to you, you can read. I like to sort of tell you the stuff uh, that is way too personal to say out loud on a microphone. I just sort of tell you what's behind the book and what gave rise to it, which is a lawyerly way of saying, why did you write this book now? And, and then we open it up to questions. You can ask me even more personal stuff about my ex-husband's thing one and thing two. <laughs> you can be more green, I'll tell you the best stories. Of <laughs> why this book, why now? The real reason is that I started to write it in Palm Sunday. Now, that makes me sound like an excellent Catholic. I'm not. I told my daughter when she was little that we were lapsed Catholics, and she thought I said collapsed Catholics, <laughs> which is really more like it. And in any event, my mom passed away on Palm Sunday many years ago. And so I happened to start writing a book on Palm Sunday, and I was thinking of my mother. And there's a lot of reasons, but the first one sort of goes back to, I want to tell you a few stories, and if I do this well enough, you'll understand why it matters. It actually begins at a time when my mother had moved, my mother lived with me, near me in Pennsylvania. She decided to move to Miami to live with my brother. He lived in South Beach and he's gay. She said to me, Lisa, you are so boring. All you do is read and write. I was like, I know, ain't it great? But you have to understand that my mother grew up in working class Italian. And so when she caught my nose in a book, she would say, stop reading, it will ruin your eyes. <laughs> and it kind of did. But I put it in context for Connecticut. I just remember. <laughs> so fast forward to a time when she, I love her. She lives near me. She's, I want to live with your brother because really, well, he's gay in South Beach and that is a lot more fun than me. <laughs> you can't get me with gay in South Beach. You can see a lot of fun, but you're not that much more. So she goes down a little bit and this is what happens. This is a true story. You can't even move away. One morning, it's a quiet Sunday morning. She wakes up completely convinced, interestingly, that there has been an earthquake. She wakes up my brother, Frank. Every one of my family is named Frank, just so you know. It's only Frank. My daughter's Francesca. It's a long story. We can memorize one name. That's it. She wakes up my brother, Frank. There's been an earthquake. He's like, Mom, go back to bed. She goes next door to the neighbor. She wakes him up, Bruce. There has been an earthquake. He's like, Mary, please go back to bed. She, for a reason none of us will ever know, doesn't go back to bed. She calls the Miami Herald. Hello, my name is Mary Scottolini, and I would like to tell you there has been an earthquake. And they're like, you, they're rude. You might be crazy. <laughs> and my mother, who is from South Philly, to the bone, says, what's your name? Why does she say, what's your name? Because my mother has a list. It's not the thing to do list. Ladies, I know this is nice up here, but we're going to keep it real for a minute. This is real life and wolf. My mother has a shit list. <laughs> it's a rolling nuclear of boot. <laughs> Who is she mad at now? It's a little merry-go-round, but in a really negative way. Okay, she takes his name down. He has her name, evidently, not the only one with the shit list. My mother, they take each other. My mother hangs up the phone in the good old days when you used to be able to slam a phone down. It was so completely satisfying. Boom. Five minutes later, he calls her back. Mary Scottolini, there has been an earthquake. <laughs> I know. I tried to tell you that. Now, the reason I like to tell the story, when we interrupt my story, which is itself an interruption, is that. I think that there is probably, how long do you think this will take me to do this? <laughs> Hold on, but we get crazy. Look, I did. Was a good one. Like a big girl all by myself. The big girls can do anything, right? <laughs> the amazing thing about the earthquake was that it did not occur in Miami. It occurred in Tampa. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Do you know anything about Florida geography? You don't have to. One's at the top and one's at the bottom. My mother was the only person in South Florida who experienced an earthquake that occurred in Tampa. The proof positive was that she called the Miami Herald. And they sent a news van to the house. 
They come and interview my mother on the lawn. The television screen, the current underneath says Earthquake Mary. Oh. My brother comes out on the lawn. Now, I told you before that he's gay. He is, however, the only gay man who has no fashion sense. <laughs> Let's not go with the stereotypes, folks, because the sound leaves will bust them all. My brother is wearing a mesh tank top to meet the TV news man. Why? Why you mean this? I'll tell you. Because you can see the map of Italy tattooed on his chest. <laughs> Milan is his left nipple. I'm telling you. Explain clear where your left nipple is. It's sort of Milan. And there is my brother. We, uh, they say to my mother, how did you How did you know that there was, how are you the only person on the phone is Belfast Earthquake Turn to Tampa? He said, because I know these things. <laughs> and they like ran screaming like she really is as crazy as we thought the first time around. Mm -hmm. Of course, then a good footnote to the story is that later there's going to be a hurricane in Florida. And I get nervous. I tell my mouth is dry. My mouth is dry because I went to Clam Castle. <laughs> <laughs> which I have I love RJ Julia and I request it every year. But I discovered Clan Castle and I love Clan Castle almost as much. Okay. So I had the lobster roll and the fries, which are so salty and delicious that I have to drink gallons of water for everything. My mother, there's a hurricane. I say to my mom, you have to come north. I live in Philly. I'm worried. She's 4'11. I'm worried she's going to blow away in a hurricane. She comes up now. My mother gets off the plane. My mother's a little like Yosemite Sam. She's Yosemite Sam. She's cranky. She can that plane cranky. And um, a guy comes on a microphone to her. You don't give us a microphone. You're going to find that out very soon. <laughs> so uh, they say, he says to her, is anybody from Philly here? No, okay. Uh, Do you know the name of Bill Boldini? Yeah. Okay, that was the newscaster who came up to my mother. So you know this is legit, girl. You're my home girl. We will discuss. So, exactly. <laughs> came up to my mother and said, did you come north because you were afraid of a hurricane? Oh, no. <laughs> my mother said, I'm not afraid of a hurricane. I am a hurricane.